the city of Luxembourg is uniquely sited on a plateau overlooking the Alzette and Petrus rivers. Known as the Bock, the landmass provides a natural fortification that drops up to 70 metres to the valley below. The city has expanded across these valleys and its numerous levels, and today is serviced by a series of viaducts and bridges that span the gorges surrounding the old town. The city grew from original fortifications on the site that date from as early as the 10th century, and which were developed over the following centuries as the city expanded. With some of the earliest bridges in Luxembourg developed as part of the original fortifications of the Bock itself. In the 17th century, the fortifications consisted of individual forms that had been separated by cuts into the cliff face and connected by bridges, originally constructed of timber and complete with drawbridges. The largest of these eventually developing into the Pont du Château or Schlafbrek, translating as the Castle Bridge, the structure we find today was built in the year 1735 and is constructed of red sandstone. With its design lending to the strategic requirements of the day, the bridge can be crossed over multiple levels with a tunnel below and is connected by a spiral staircase internally. The structure was extensively restored in 1992 and 1993. By the mid-19th century, Luxembourg had developed south across the Petrus River. Opening its railway station in 1859, strategically positioned away from the fortified old town. The city now required a permanent connection to its south and began works on a new bridge to replace an earlier timber variant in 1861, completing the Passerelle, also known as the Luxembourg Viaduct. The 290 metre long bridge is formed by the connection of 24 arches and spans approximately 45 metres above the Petrus Valley. Built on a kerb, it's noted that this was potentially to avoid the line of direct cannonball fire from the original fortifications beyond. The original deck of the Passerelle was seven and a half metres wide which would be sufficient to host the Luxembourg Tramway, which started operating across the bridge from 1875. However, the deck would be nearly doubled in width in time for its centenary, expanding to 15.3 metres in width in 1960, and widened again in 2020 to provide a bus lane and cycle path. Whilst the passerelle may be far wider today, at the beginning of the 20th century, its single lane was not meeting the requirements of the city, and a second crossing of the Petrus would be developed. In 1903, the 153-metre-long Adolf Bridge was opened further to the west, named for the Grand Duke of the time and today known colloquially as the New Bridge, in contrast to the old bridge of the Passerelle. The three segmented arches of the bridge were developed over two separate spans, which looked to reduce the structure's overall material use. With its central arch spanning 84 metres, on completion it was the largest masonry arch bridge in the world. The Adolf Bridge would be subject also to numerous upgrade projects, with major works in the 1960s replacing and widening its concrete deck. However, by the 1990s, studies would find the bridge in a bad condition, with many of its stone blocks damaged, deformation of the arches and cracking in its deck. With an original plan to infill the arches with reinforced concrete, the bridge was instead anchored mechanically and new sensors installed to monitor any movement. It was apparent that more intensive restorative work would be required, and from 2014 the bridge was closed, with its deck and stones removed and repaired, and additional anchoring instituted. During the closure of the Adolf Bridge, an alternative path of travel would be required, with a temporary bridge developed 30 metres to its west. The 174 metre long blue bridge, named for the colour of its steelwork, would provide three lanes of traffic over the Petrus for the duration of the works, before being dismantled. As part of the project, the deck of the Adolf Bridge would be widened once more, with new tram lines and a wider pedestrian path. However, when the question of a dedicated bicycle path was raised, rather than widening further, a new path was suspended below the road deck between the two spans, with the project completed in 2017. The Adolf Bridge would go on to inform the design of the 1908 Walmart Lane Bridge in Philadelphia. Luxembourg City has also retained a number of its original crossings of the Alzette at the valley floor, including here at the Pont de Grund and the nearby Pont de Stierken. And whilst these connections are still relevant today, the Alzette River has been known to flood, with larger bridges developed from the plateau above critical to maintaining these links. None exemplifies this more than the Grand Duchess Charlotte Bridge, affectionately known as the Red Bridge, at 355 metres long and 75 metres in height, it's the largest crossing within the city. 
Designed to an international competition and opened in 1966, the bridge provided a new connection to the north of the city that at the time was being redeveloped with the infrastructure to house the capital of the European communities. In 2018, changes to the roadway were completed to provide two tram tracks alongside car traffic, and the bridge was given a new coat of its red paint. The crossings in Luxembourg City are not limited to its roadways and tramways, with heavy rail traversing to the east of the Old Town via a dedicated viaduct. Opened in 1862, the Pulvermull Viaduct, named for the region and its former gunpowder mill, provides the primary path of rail north of Luxembourg Station, before branching to the west along the Pfaffenthal Viaduct, which follows the Alzette River. The bridges of Luxembourg City each impart a showing of its history, with the capital providing a mix of crossings to various size, material and use, and one that has developed these crossings as its transport needs have shifted. With the old town founded high on the plateau above, it would be a very different trip across the valley without them.